So our next sample problem kind of starts combining um, this first or the second concept here of aqueous ionic solutions uh, with precipitation reactions. So we're going to practice writing molecular equations, total ionic equations, and net ionic equations in the context of precipitation reactions. So again, with precipitation reactions, uh, we're going to need to refer to table 4.1 because once we take soluble ions and we mix them together with other soluble ions, we'll have the potential of new pairings that can form. And we'll have to reference this table to see whether or not those new pairings are soluble or not. And if they're insoluble, that means we form a precipitate, and you need to write a little S indicating you formed a precipitate or something solid. Okay, so we'll leave this table handy. Um, we'll also have a periodic table. Remember your best cheat sheet handy, um, because some of these rules let you um, uh, consider that maybe it's a group 2A or a halogen or something like that, and you want to make sure that you can use your periodic table to reference which species those are. Okay, so this question says, predict whether or not a reaction occurs when each of the following pairs of solutions are mixed. If a reaction does occur, write the balance, molecular, total ionic, and net ionic equations, and then identify spectator ions. We're going to write total ionic equations just a little bit early on, and then what we're going to try to do is get to the point where balanced molecular equations are important and net ionic equations are important. So we'll see if we can kind of make the transition between these two without needing to write the very tedious total ionic equation. Okay, so starting with um, our first problem here, again, you can see in this chapter how important chapter two is knowing how to take a name and make a chemical formula from it. So we've got uh, potassium fluoride, so KF, aqueous, plus strontium nitrate. Strontium is SR2+, plus, nitrate is NO3-, minus. so we're going to have SR, NO3-2, aqueous. And what we do here when we do these precipitation reactions is we swap partners. So we're going to swap partners. That's how we're going to figure out what we make on the right side of this equation. And so we're going to have potassium nitrate, potentially, and then strontium fluoride. Now, important here is we want to make sure we balance our equation. We can see that we've got two nitrates that we have here. So we're going to want to have two of them over there. But now we've added two potassium, so we need to put a two there. Two fluorides. Oh, we already had two fluorides. So we're good to go. The only thing that we have to do here is we don't know what we want to put here. And we need to use table 4.1 to be able to determine that. So I'm just going to go through, particularly with this first one, to show table 4.1. Okay, so we have to look up potassium nitrate. Is that soluble or insoluble? So you need to look up both the cation and the anion often here and see what it says. Well, all common compounds of group 1A ions like potassium are soluble. All right, we're good. And actually, if we looked up nitrates as well, you'd see that most nitrate salts are soluble. So that's kind of a win-win combination. So we know that this guy is going to be aqueous. Strontium fluoride. Well, we need to find fluorides. All common fluorides are soluble except those of lead and group 2A. Well, again, that's why I grabbed this periodic table here. If we see group 2A, there's strontium. So when you have strontium that you mix with fluorine as strontium fluoride, that's going to be insoluble. So in this case, this one's going to be an S. So that truly is our, what we call, uh, balanced molecular equation. Shows everything kind of together. Even though these are ionic compounds, it's not, not really a molecule. It shows everything together. For this problem, I am going to write out our total ionic equation. I'll do that for these first couple of problems here. But as we move forward, I'm going to start trying to take um, and skip having to write the total ionic and having us see the net ionic from the molecular. And as I do this, you'll see why. Writing out the total ionic is very tedious. Because anytime you have something that's aqueous, that means you have to write these species separate with our little aqueous. So we've got two of each of these. And then we've got our strontium 2 plus, our two nitrates. We form two potassium ions, two nitrate ions. And then because this was solid, it stays like that in our total ionic equation. 
Okay, now what we need to do here is recognize that if there's anything that's present on the left and the right side of the equation, like this potassium, we can cross it off, and the nitrate, we can cross it off, and then what's left, so these are our spectator ions. Okay, because they appear on the left and the right side of the equation. Whatever's left, we use to make our net ionic. So two fluorides plus strontium two plus gives us strontium fluoride as a solid. So total molecular, I should say balanced molecular, total ionic, net ionic. What we'd like to be able to do is kind of write our balanced molecular and from there kind of come down here. And, you know, it, it'll take practice to do this, but hopefully when you kind of look at things, you can see, oh, here's potassium over here as part of an aqueous. Potassium is part of an aqueous. So that'll be a spectator ion. Nitrate is part of an aqueous. Nitrate is part of an aqueous. That's going to be a spectator. Here we have fluoride part of an aqueous, but fluoride part of a solid. That's not going to be a spectator ion, so it appears in our total ionic. Strontium part of aqueous, strontium part of a solid. So that's going to appear in our net ionic. So again, some strategies to try to uh, stop having us make this um, kind of tedious middle step here. We'd love to be able to go directly from our balanced molecular to our ionic equation. Okay, so let's work through our second one here and see if we can see what's going on. Ammonium perchlorate, NH4, ClO4 aqueous, sodium bromide, swap partners, we're going to get um, um, sodium perchlorate, right, and ammonium bromide. We need to use table 4.1 to see what these are. So let's grab table 4.1. Well, we already learned that sodium salts are soluble, right? All common compounds of sodium are soluble. Uh, but even if we look up perchlorates here, perchlorates are soluble. So this is definitely going to be an aqueous. Ammonium. Well, I remember seeing ammonium salts. Ammonium salts are soluble. Okay, so that guy's soluble too. Huh. Well, nothing formed a precipitate. Everybody's still happy being in solution. Okay, so this equation has all the same ions on the left and the right. And so basically this means everyone is a spectator. So Knowing that we cross off spectator ions to make our net ionic, if there's no net ionic equation because there's no reaction. And you can use the abbreviations NR to indicate no reaction. That's just what happens. So again, another problem to think about, don't presume by necessity that you're going to have a precipitate that forms. It might not be the case, and you'll test this out in your lab.